If you want the best possible way to take on 3.7's a best floor 12 lineup, then you've come to the right place. I'm going to guide you with some tips and strategy for dealing with the Heralds and Consecrated Beasts along with other enemies, so let's get started. Now there are some fundamentals we need to learn, so I'm quickly going to go over them. The first fundamental is going to be poise. Picture this as an invisible bar above the enemy's health that once depleted it will stagger an opponent. Attacks like plunging attacks, most skills and bursts, and some charge attacks are good at depleting the poise of enemies. For example, an aim shot will not fully deplete the poise of a whopper flower, but a fully charged aim shot will when shot at the weak point. Doing multiple aim shots will eventually break the poise as it is accumulative, meaning it adds up. Every enemy has a different amount of poise too, depending on what state they're in. The next fundamental is going to be crowd control. This is pretty easy to understand and it's the ability to control the location of your enemies, usually into a specific area as a group so that AoE damage can can be utilized. And then finally we have resources. These are going to be your skills, your constellations, passive talents, bursts and everything that your character provides that has a cooldown or effect on your enemy. Alright let's move on into floor 12 chamber 1. The first half using an emo crowd control is going to be the best way to take this floor on with a combination of electro and dendro if your dps output is low because it will stun the primal constructs. If you don't have an emo crowd control even though everybody has an emo traveler then there are a few ways to control the flowers. Firstly when you start run in the opposite direction and they will burrow and spawn in front of you. If you are using a bow character then a fully charged aim shot to the head will immediately break the Whopper Flower's poise and cause them to burrow into the ground and spawn next to you. If you are using a melee character then a charged attack will break the poise of a flower and cause the same thing. This will help you with crowd controlling the enemies when you don't have an anima character like Venti, Kazuo or Sucrose to crowd control and group the enemies. Keep in mind that every time you break the Whopper Flower's poise, they will then burrow underground and spawn next to you. So if you are using a bow character and there is a flower out of position, fire the aim shot at the flower and he will spawn by you. If you are using a melee character, then charge attack those around you and reposition to the flower that is out of position instead. When you fight the primal constructs, it's the same principle of grouping them together. With Anemo, this is very easy, but without Anemo, this can be done by running to the sides of the group. If you aren't able to DPS the prisms before they go invisible, then creating a quicken reaction on the prism will immediately stun them out of that state. But that is why, as previously said, running Electro and Dendro is going to be your best way of taking on this floor. Moving on to the second half of 12-1 and this is probably the worst chamber in the entire floor. First I want to talk about team comps and the enemies. The abyss mages are pretty easy to take on but the biggest problem is going to be the heralds that spawn afterwards. There'll be one hydro herald and two cryo heralds. The hydro herald shield will break the fastest when you use dendro and will take 18 dendro hits to break. The cryo herald shield is weakest to pyro and will take 28 pyro hits. With this in mind, the team comp that I suggest that is best for this is going to be one dendro character and two pyro characters. Your fourth character can be anything that will help with sustainability or control. I would recommend an emo crowd control over shielders if you have strong DPS. Otherwise, healing and shielding is good if you have the weaker DPS. Now moving into battle, this is where your fundamentals come into play. You'll want to prioritize getting the hydro herald into his shield as soon as possible and not worry about the cryo herald. Once you have the hydro herald in shield form, focus on dealing dendro attacks until he is at around 50% of his shield. During this time you should also be saving and building resources on your other characters. When the hydro herald is at around 50% shield, you can then focus your attacks on the cryo herald because the attacks you apply to them will slowly take away the hydro herald shield. Keep in mind that you'll be creating blooms when attacking the hydro herald shield with dendro that can turn into the burgeon reaction and help deplete both hydro and cryo shield. Now you can start to use your resources in combination like jungling burst, toma burst, penalty 6 conversion. Depending on your fourth character you can also use their utility to help you in the fight. Moving on to floor 12 2, it's just two bosses, it's pretty easy to fight them since it's one enemy and they don't really have any immunity windows. Hold your resources and use them in combination and you should be fine.
Floor 12, 3 and this is the other talking point about this lineup because we're fighting for level 100 Consecrated Beasts. Firstly, I would not recommend Hydro or Dendro characters only even as your main source of damage because they do have 70% resistance to their respective element when they are not stunned. When fighting these enemies, I would focus on taking on the Dendro Beast first because he is faster at closing the distance from you and has close range attacks. Although you don't want to run away from the beast constantly, creating space between the the Hydro Beast and yourself will lower the chances of the massive damage you can take when they do attack together. What you'll want to do is build your burst up from the beginning of the fight or use them and rebuild them so that when you see the green mist appear you'll have your burst rotation ready. Start your burst rotation when you see the consecrated totem so that you can maximize your DPS window on the stunned beast because this is when the resistance is at the lowest. You also don't need to distance yourself from the other beasts at this point because you will only need to dodge attacks from one beast as the other one is stunned. After this rotation, the other beast will release its energy and you can again stun one beast while the other is in its phagocytic state. Once you defeat the first two, then you can repeat this process for the next wave and then it's taking on the Baptiste in the second half which is pretty easy to do and then you will have cleared floor 12 and maybe, maybe not depending on your team comps, you will have your 9 stars. Hope this video has helped you and educated you and given you a bit of guidance through this Floor 12 lineup. I do like the direction that Hoyaverse is going into, that it's a lot more mechanical now rather than this DPSing all the enemies down. If you have enjoyed and found this helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and leave a comment down below on your thoughts. I'll see you guys in the next video.